Bible in it? Yeah. The Bible said he loved us and washed us from our own sins in his own blood. So he loved us before he ever washed us. That's an amazing thing. He loved us before he ever washed us. Yeah. Amen. All right. Now, I just want to take a minute and show you a little truth from the Bible here tonight. And I'm, I'm going to do it in the form of a, of a question to you, for you. In the book of Matthew, chapter number 5. Matthew, chapter 5, is part of the what we call Sermon on the Mount. When Jesus gave that Sermon on the Mount. And I want to pick out a verse of Scripture here in Matthew 5. And, and preach on a, a doctrine that you don't hear much about. Matthew, chapter 5. Verse 38, Matthew chapter 5, that it been you, resist not evil, but who smite thee on the right cheek, turn him the other also. And if any man will sue thee at the law, take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. And whoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. Does anybody in here know what twain means? Two. Two times. Now, that's the verse I want you to look at. Now, everybody in Shining Light Baptist Church, I want you all to look at this verse here tonight. Whosoever, that's me, shall compel, that means I ask, thee, that's all y'all, to go a mile, go with him twain. Verse said, if a man asks you to go a mile, go with him, and then go with him another mile. I want to preach tonight on the subject, the doctrine of the second mile. The doctrine of the second mile. Completely opposite from the day you and I are living in. This doctrine teaches that when, when you have something to do, don't just do it. Don't go be above and beyond what's asked or required of you. That's what he said. Like an employer. I don't know if you got many employers in here tonight. If you're an employer and you have an employee and you say, uh, uh, we need this place cleaned up in here, and that you come back and the floor swept and a few things are done, and then he's up there on a ladder cleaning the lights, that's what I'm talking about tonight. He wasn't asked to do it. He wasn't required to do it, but just went above and beyond. Like y'all bring these bus kids on Sunday night. That's above and beyond what's asked or required of you. That's what I'm preaching about tonight. You know, it's a Bible doctrine. The Bible doctrine is if, if you need, if you try something, uh, you try, try to do, do more than what you, and, and that's true. Listen, this thing will work. This thing will work in your church. This thing will work in your marriage. This thing will work in your business. This, this truth, this doctrine will work in your personal life if, if you'll put it to practice. We're living in a generation that says, I'm going to do just, just all, no, I, what I absolutely have to do to get by and not one more thing. That's our attitude nowadays. We'll do just what we have to do and heck with everything else. But this doctrine said, if you got something to do, not only be willing to do it, but go the extra mile. I remember uh, several years ago, uh, I, uh, Kelly's little old car, that little Toyota Solera she got, I've always loved them things. I ain't never seen a Toyota Solera I didn't like. Uh, I just think they're, they're just a neat little car. They're a Camry, but they're a convertible. And I've always loved them, just like a forerunner. I ain't never seen a forerunner I didn't like. I've seen, I like some better than others, but uh, I've, I've never seen one I didn't like. And uh, that, that car, um, it's a 2005, and so it's, uh, it's, it's a past an antique. It'll be 20 years old uh, this, this, excuse me, this coming fall. And so uh, uh, that little car, I, uh, one day she come home and uh, I looked and she said, I think she said, I think I locked, uh, I, I've locked the keys up or car or something came find them. We couldn't find the keys. And we looked everywhere for them keys. I'm telling you, I mean everywhere. We looked, oh, I said, now look, when you lose your keys, you go back and retrace everything you've done, every place you've went. Don't don't go in your bedroom and and start just don't move and think you know because you will cover them up worse. Uh, don't touch nothing. Uh, just start looking, look, look and see. We look, and I don't know if you remember or not, uh, but uh, 
we, I said, search the whole living room. The whole living room. I said, we're going to find them keys. I mean, without them keys, we're, I mean, that thing, uh, it, it wasn't going nowhere. And it, it was about two, three months. And I, I finally just about gave up. And I actually called the Toyota place uh, down here. And they said, uh, well, if you got one, you know, that we can make one. I went, duh. If I had that, I wouldn't be calling you. Uh, and, but they, them they got a computer chip in them now. You can't just go get a key nowadays. Uh, you know, give it, leave it up to them to make it so complicated. You can't, you can't do nothing. Uh, you can't roll down your window no more. You can't uh, remove your seat no more. Uh, the battery, they, and you, you uh, so they said, uh, long story short, I was going to have to have a thing towed to the Toyota dealer in, in Hickory or Charlotte somewhere. They'd have to get a man come out, do a computer check, and then match that key and, and order one and have one made. Long story short, it's about $400. And that was um, eight or nine, ten years ago almost. It, it'd be $1,500 now, I'm sure, at least. Tow bill, new, 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 uh, another key, and everything. And I said, ah! I said, well, find this key. And we looked and we looked. And I don't know, I don't know if it, who it was. It, I, but we offered somebody to come over to the house at that time. And I, I said, I'll give y'all $20. Was it you, Ethan? Was it 100 Okay, I offered Ethan and Molly $100 if they'd find them keys. They got down in the living room. Son, there's a looking underneath there, sticking their arms down in there like that, doing like that, pulling out. You know, because they might have fell out of her purse or something, went down in that hole, and, and it went that way, couldn't find it there, couldn't find it there, looked all right. Oh, it's aggravated. I, we, of course, first thing we've done, look under all the seats, uh, pull out the mats. Uh, We've we done everything. We've done everything. And I, we, I gave up. I gave up. And I'll never forget. I'll never forget. I was out in my driveway. I can tell you the spot where I was at. And I was, happened to be right with the Lord that day. And I mean, you know, you ever been one of them days where you just felt like you was right, you know? You probably wasn't when you felt like that. But I, but I, I thought it was. And I remember, and I, I looked up in the sky and I said, Lord, would you please, would you please, if it could be all right, would you let me find them keys? And I kid you not, I am not lying. I went and opened that door and sat down in that car and pushed my hand way down in a hole like that. And there they was. And I pulled him out and I said, Whoa, hallelujah. I said, Glory to God, free, no money. No, and they'd wedge down in there between, between the little thing. They listen, they ain't no doubt in my mind the Lord let me do that. That put that, that you know, here's when you win, here's when you win. When you go that one more time. One more time. Hit it. One more time. Go. It's in sports, it's in basketball, it's in football, it's in boxing. Uh, you know, you can get your eyes beat out out there and box it. You say, I'm going to get up and get that guy one more time. Bam! Knock him out. Uh, like that right there. It's in everything. In basketball, you can be behind at halftime, and you can be in there in the locker room saying, man, I'm embarrassed. I don't even want to go back out there. And the coach say, look, let's go out there and give it our best. Let's go out there and do our very best. And you're liable to go out there and win it. You don't never know. That's second mile philosophy. That's, in other words, when you get down and you get discouraged and you're just about to quit, you jump up and say, one more time. I'm going to get it one more time. If I hadn't done that, I'd, I'd, have had to, I'd, I'd have been out a bunch of money trying to get a key made for that car. And what I'm trying to teach you tonight is, is when, when the, if somebody asks you, or do something, you don't try to do something, go that extra mile, go that extra mile, and, and you just don't know. Now, y'all know uh, Dax is here this weekend, and he's racing. I don't know a whole lot about that sport. Uh, the most I will tell, try to explain it to me. You can win but not win, and you can lose but win, and then you total up and win when you didn't win, lose if you didn't lose, win. Uh, but somehow or another, they got it figured out. And, and they got it figured out so that, uh, um, like, you tell me if this is right. Um, they they said that when you're in a motorcycle race and you're in and you're running and you you can mess up and wreck, which they do all the time. Um, he wrecked all the time in them. They wreck, go down, and instead of just quitting and getting out, you jump back in and and finish the race 
even if you're 14th or 15th, and you get points by that. Is that sort of right? Sort of right? Uh, in other words, like, you'd have been worse off if you just said, heck with it, I'm, I'm going to the house. Uh, then, then you'd have said, you, you get better points, but you're better off finishing 20th than not finishing at all. Right? And you know, we got too many Christians that think, well, I done messed up, preacher, and my married blood wound up getting divorced. I lost my job. I'm just going to quit. No, no. Listen, you better off to come in on crutches than not come in at all. You better off to hobble in, brother, than not come in. You better off to say, by the grace of God, I'm coming in like this, but I'm coming in by the grace of God. I made up my mind a long time ago. I may have to crawl before it's over with, but by the grace of God. We're going to finish this race. We're going to cross the finish line. May not come in first place, but that ain't the way the Lord counts the wins anyway. That ain't the way they do it. Somehow or another. Uh, yeah, it's finishing the race. Finishing the race. Finishing the race. Finishing the race. Now, I'm going to ask you, since it's youth rally time, two weeks from Friday. Two weeks from Friday. Does everybody hear me? Two weeks from Friday, I'm panicking. Y'all, go, I'm, Somebody's going to need to have to panic with me. I'm, if I'm going to panic, y'all ought to have to panic. Uh, amen, brother. Hey, somebody ought to care instead of going home watching TV two or three hours, laying on your phone all day. I need some panickers to help me panic. You know what I'm talking about. Amen. This is a lot of responsibility. We're talking about a thousand people coming out. We're talking about kids running everywhere. We're talking about food. We're talking about buses. We're talking about thousands of dollars. And it cannot just, it ain't, you know what people think? I've been there in youth rally since 1987. And you know what people think? You know what people think? They think, Brother Danny can handle it. It'd be all right. Hey, don't it always turn out great? Long as he, and that ain't true. That ain't true. I've had some flops. But we've been over there before, and it rained the whole blessed day. And people out there cussing and fighting, getting mad. And the kids getting dirty and the bus tearing up and everything. It's not just automatically good. It don't just happen to be good every year because it's shining like giant spring youth rally. We're going to have to get down to business. We're going to have to sacrifice. And I don't expect you to feel the burden that I feel. I'm the pastor. I don't. But I, I expect you to feel some. I, I expect you to help some if you can. And so let's practice second mile philosophy and doctrine. First would be in our, in our Bible study itself. You know a lot of people do this? They pick up the Bible, read two or three verses, and then lay it down. Pick it up no day or two. Ah, read a few verses. Also by watering, he worrieth the thick cloud. He scattereth the bright cloud. And his turn, what in the world is that? I don't know. And lay it down. Now, now look, you're not going to get nothing out of your Bible until you read it. And then when you get done, you read it some more. That's when you're going to get some. The extra mile. That extra little effort. Most people too lazy. Or wicked to do that. You get it when you get down. One of the times since since he's here, I'll talk about him tonight a little bit. Uh, he's going back to Florida tomorrow. But uh, you might not remember this, but I've heard myself talking about it uh, probably nine, ten years ago. One of the times when he got hurt, broke his leg or neck or back or something. Uh, uh, when when he got hurt, he was out for a while. Carrie might not remember this, and he was laid up for a couple of weeks. Couldn't do nothing. Just lay in bed. And I said, Carrie. I guess he was probably about eight or nine years old then, maybe something like that. And I said, Carrie, get the Word of God in him. Take this opportunity to get the Word of God in him. And I'm telling you, parents better get it. You better get it in while they're little. You better get the Word of God in him. I take Frankie. I don't listen. They want to watch TV? Get them them little Bible videos. It's got those Bible stories in it. And put on. So so they're getting they're getting their way, but they're being taught the Bible at the same time. I mean, it don't have to be Pokemon and SpongeBob and all of that uh, all the time. Uh, it, it, it can be Bible stories. Listen, them Bible stories are the most exciting stories in the world. And I, I remember she had something like, I don't know if you remember it, but she had Dax watching them things. He was watching them little stories, and uh, uh, you know, and he's getting into them. You know, when you're laid up and you can't walk, uh, you know, and you're watching, he's watching Samson and, and Moses and them coming out, and he got that story about where Lot, and his wife were pulled out of Sodom, and his eyes were getting that big. He probably eight or nine years old. You might not even remember that, Gary. But anyway, she had him doing it, and he was watching them stories like that. I said, see there? Look at there. And here come Lot and his wife 
and all of that. And Lot's wife turned around and looked back. And in the way they had it in the movie, it, she just crystallized. You know how they do it, how they make it look like in the movie, she went, little sparkles. And she's like this. And Dak said, did he freeze her? <laughs> I said, no. He turned her into a pillar of salt. A horse licked her from then on. I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know why I did that. But listen, y'all. Listen. That you know what that is? That's get that's get take every advantage. That's why we believe in Christian school. That's why we believe in homeschool. That's why. Listen, I ain't trying to be ugly. No, Lord knows I'm not. But it's getting to the point where you can't hardly put a kid in a Christian in a public school no more. It's coming to that. And I know some of you can't, you can't afford. I understand that. But good night in the morning, we are in a we are in a war. For our kids' soul tonight. And we need some parents who are saying, look, I'm going to give up some of my time and go the extra mile and teach my kids the Bible. Get them down. Sometimes when Frankie's out of school, they're on that weird schedule where they're out a week or two. And uh, and uh, she'll set him down in, in the, at the kitchen table. da 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 Bible, Bible. I get him. And I say, all right, Frankie, let's learn the Bible. And we we're in my bedroom, you can see we got big windows. And you see the sky? We look for an airplane. I said, there goes one. He said, is that a UFO? I said, yeah, it probably is. It's disguised as an airplane. They know how to look like airplanes. And, uh, and, and we make up all kinds of stuff. Sometimes it's a star. If it ain't moving, it's a star, I reckon. And uh, uh, I said, there it is. There it is. And I said, you know, what did God, who made them stars? God did. Who put the stars up there in the sky? God did. Now you see what I'm doing? I can't, you can't just say, well, I take them to church every Sunday and they go in there. That ain't enough. A parent's got to go that extra mile. You got to go that extra mile. At, at Sunday school, listen, one hour a week in Sunday school will not get your kid what they need to live for God in this world we're living in. One hour a week's impossible. One hour a week. Get the Bible in them, y'all. Get it in them. Get it in them. Get it in them. Get it in them. I heard about that guy, and you might have seen that story where he's hitting this big rock, and there's a rock about as big as that thing right there, that whole thing, big piece of solid granite, and he had this big hammer, and he's hitting that rock going, bam, 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 bam. And he hit it about 500 times, and finally he just laid that thing down and said, I'm done. And something in him said, hit it one more time. And, buddy, he took that hammer and hit that thing, and it went, that's what I'm preaching about tonight here's what I'm preaching about tonight Lord I pray bless the youth rally Lord I pray that you'd be real to my kid Lord I pray that they'd say no to stupid stuff and drugs and alcohol and wickedness and, and all the sin out there Lord please help Lord give us a great youth rally in Jesus name amen Lord, please, that, that right there. That right there is where you get somewhere. That right there. There have been times, listen, we're living in a time when these cool preachers, all these cool preachers, yeah, like everything's awesome, man. Like we're just awesome. Like Jesus just wants to give us everything and he's giving us everything. Well, I hate to tell you this, you little nut, but it don't work like that. You know what the old people used to do? You know what the old people used to do? They'd go out in the woods somewhere and they'd pray until God opened up the sky and give them the blessing. They called it praying through. Now, I know there's no scripture that said that. I understand people get weird when you start talking like that. But I know for a fact, there ain't, you ain't going to change my mind. There have been times when I've been praying and I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and it felt like I was climbing a, 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 a hill on my hands and knees and I was climbing and climbing and climbing and climbing and then all of a sudden it felt like something just broke and it's like you take a sled up a hill and you get to slide down the other side and boy it's fun going down I said Lord then you don't want to quit you know when you really get right with the Lord daddy you don't want to quit praying when you want to quit you ain't you ain't there yet and and so and I, I'm like that all the time I'm preaching to myself we need to learn how to pray through, pray through. 
and pray that God will help us. Pray through. So I'm asking y'all to pray with me the next uh, three weeks. Will you go twain? Will you come? Will you get in your prayer closet? What if what if uh, if a hundred people prayed ten minutes a day? That's that's ten hundred minutes a day. Whatever that is. Well, ten hundred minutes. Ten hundred minutes. I don't know. A thousand. Uh, that's why I'm praying, buddy. If t- if a hundred people prayed ten minutes, that's ten hundred minutes a day. And the Lord's up in heaven. There's ten hundred minutes a day coming up, saying, "Bless that youth rally. Bless that youth rally." And then we go back and say, "You know what?" 10 minutes, it ain't too much. You, you, there is not a person in here, I'd say 90 people, a person in here this evening, waste that much time on your phone every day looking at nothing that's ever going to mean anything. It may not be sinful, but it's just stupid stuff. Like a guy sticking a toothbrush in his nose and brushing somebody else's teeth or something. I've never seen that. I just, that's, people do stuff like that. You say, oh, did you see this? Oh, did you see this video? Oh, did you see this video? Let me see this video. Oh, did you see this video? And you're going to be dead soon. I mean, life's over just like that. It's going fast, y'all. I'm asking you, will you go with me a mile? Let's go and pray and pray twain. Stephen Curry, best shooter's ever been. Maybe, listen, I, I don't know him other sports, but I know basketball. I know basketball. And I'm as good as any of them guys. They got one thing I ain't got. Body. I got the basketball head. But I'm just kidding with you. But listen, they you'd think somebody could shoot as good as him. Would on his days off lay around, lay around, show up to practice. Come on, show up to practice. Come on. You know what he does? On his days off, he goes in the gym and shoots five hundred. He don't have to do that. It ain't like he's broke and scared he's going to lose his job. I mean, it ain't like making eighty million a year and will be set up for life even after he quits with endorsements and tennis shoes and stuff. He ain't doing that for money. He's doing that to say, "Look, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good." And instead of laying at home today on my phone, I'm going to go in the gym. And shoot 500 more. That's the second mile of philosophy. Doing it when you don't have to. Practicing after practice is over. Going, running when you're done running. When the coach says, okay, we're done for today, boy. And you go out in the yard and play another couple of hours. See? The second mile philosophy. You know what makes our youth rally special? You know, what makes our youth rally special is not skits and stuff. People get that idea, oh, they have them funny skits, and we're going to have a funny skit. No, them, them things are just, uh, all that is is just a little old something you throw in there, get people laughing, cut up for a minute, and have a little fun. It means nothing. It means nothing. That is not what makes youth rally special. What makes youth rally special is people go to that extra little bit of trouble, staying up that extra hour, fasting. Now, here we are fasting. Everybody's fasting uh, for the youth rally. And I hope you are too. And if you're not, you should. And sometimes, have you ever had this happen? Say, so, boy, I'm glad I'm done. And the Lord said, maybe you ain't done. That's rough. That's rough. The revival I got saved in, woman prayed three days and nights for us all to get saved. I didn't know her. She didn't know me. And when the three days and three nights over, the Lord said, three more. She went six days and nights. The Holy Ghost fell and Nebo changed forever. Amen. That's right. He said, oh, Brother Danny, we're just about ready to divorce at my house. And all that. Uh, in, instead of figuring out a way to get your way, why not get down and pray, fast and pray for a whole day and beg God and, instead of saying, why don't you make my husband do better, God? Why, why don't you make my wife Straighten up, God. Why don't you do something with her? Why don't you say, Lord, you make me the husband I need to be. Lord, you make me the wife that I need to be. Work on me. I can't change them. But, Lord, you can work on me and start begging. Well, I ain't the problem. They are. Well, well, be a better you then. Because you ain't going to change them. God's going to have to do it. Right? That's right, brother. Listen, uh, you're on the edge of divorce. Hang in there. Try, Try it out. Listen, you know why these, like Stephen Curry and these big athletes, LeBron, Trader, James, and, and all them, you know why they are so, you know why they're so successful? Uh, 
their worth, work ethic is unreal, people. Like them or not, buddy, they put their self through torture. Good night. I've heard about them down there training. Have to ride a bicycle. How far? 100? You ride a bicycle 100 miles? 100 miles in one day. 100 miles on a bicycle in one day. That's from here past Charlotte. And it's level in Florida, so it's not as hard as here. But that's ridiculous. Listen, people say, people say, but, but Danny, you're going to get you one of them mountain bikes doing it? Listen, I rode a bicycle 10 million miles when I was 14, 15, 13, 12. Buddy, when I got my license, I laid the bicycle down and I ain't never looked back. I'm done with bicycles. <laughs> I ain't no telling how many million times I rode down off the top on a bicycle. I rode, a, and he come over the other day, and I took him on the four wheeler, and I took him up on the hoppy top of the mountain behind the house where the real riders train, and uh, and or the sticks and rocks and big trees fell over, stuff like that that can kill you, and and, no, and, and nobody bulldozed it. And uh, you know what? I, I got to thinking, a hundred miles in a day. Oh, gosh. Them guys stay in the gym six and eight hours. Huh, 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 huh. I can't, ain't no way in the world I'd do that. There ain't no way in the world. If I'm going to do that, I'm going to get my trailer and go get me some cross ties and put them around my house and make it look a little better. And that way I'm doing two things at once. I'm not just going to sit there and let something up and down. It reminds me of crazy people. In Broad, Broad, I'm, I'm just kidding. Uh, up down, up down, up down, up down, up down. You say, you know, you babysit your kids when they're little. You used to put them when they're real little and give them a feather and put honey on their fingers and they'll just sit there all day and do like this. <laughs> That's what that reminds me of. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> uh, don't don't do that. Uh, listen, y'all. What a what a work ethic. What if we did that for Jesus? What if we did that for Jesus? What if a bus worker said? Man, ride a bicycle 100 miles a day. I'm going to visit 100 homes Saturday. They do it to attain a corruptible crown. But we an incorruptible. That's what the Bible says. The Bible said they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. A trophy that's going to rot and throw it in the fire. We do it for an incorruptible. Somebody prayed this week. And that girl got down right here and bawled her eyes out and got saved. That's an incorruptible crown, people. That ain't going to burn up when the world burns up. That ain't going to go when cash fails. That's not going to go when the world goes to hell. That'll last forever. Will you go with me, Twain? Will you go with me, Twain? Will you, will you give? Everybody gives it to youth rally. I do. We all give extra money. We try Those that have, uh, you may not have any money to give, but you can paint. You may not have any money to give, but you can mow grass. Yeah, you may not have any money to give, but I'll tell you what you can do. Uh, you can labor, lay on the floor, and beg God to bless the services. You may not be able to. You may not be able to. Uh, uh, you, you might not be able to uh, 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 give a lot of money or do play like that. But I tell you what, you can do. You can fast and pray for those that are giving it, and everybody give. Everybody give like they're supposed to. We'll have a great youth rally. We'll have it. That's what I want. Why not? Why spend? Eight or ten thousand dollars, or whatever we're going to spend, and it'd be dead in four o'clock, like most of them. Amen. You say, Brother Danny, I've tried to win my neighbor to the Lord over and over and over and over and over, and he just will not listen. Uh oh. Go what? Go back one more time. Go back one more time. That one more. That person won't even listen to me. Try it one more time. Second mile. Doctrine. Second mile. It works with visitation. I never forget old Larry Blake. Larry Blake drove a bus here for years, and Brother Larry's health was bad, and he and he loved those bus kids. And he would cry. I'd say, Brother Larry, I appreciate you driving by <laughs> Melanie, when Melanie had her bus route, Melanie Franklin. And he said, Brother Danny, I love him, yeah, man. And sincerely, tears would run down his cheeks. And he'd say, I'm going to go buy some hamburgers and cook out for him next week. I said, now, Larry, you know, I said, we'll pay. He said, no, no, I'm going to do it. Hey, Lord, Lord, it's on my heart. And he didn't just drive the bus. 
He said, I'm going to go buy some hamburgers. And we're going to have a cookout and try to give him youngins a hamburger. You know, you can't, you don't teach stuff like that. You don't, you don't get that in a, it, it's, that's, that, stuff like that, it comes from a heart desire. Just like a, just like an athlete. Just like a musician. It's got to be a heart desire. I wish I could put it in every one of us. But I'm going to stop here. One time, one time up at, up at New Man a long time ago. Now I know none of y'all remember this. Because she was probably a little bitty girl. And uh, the rest of you hadn't came yet. Uh, Crystal wasn't born. And uh, but anyway, the church was young. And we hadn't even built a new church. It was up in that old building. And I, we raised some money. And we raised some money. And I said, y'all, we're going to try to have a big offer next Sunday. His anniversary, like second or third anniversary. And we was going to try to raise money. I said, let's all give. Let's, we need a big offer. And we're going to save some money and build us a church one of these days. And, and we raised like $3,500. Now, back, back then, $3,500 would be like, like 10000 now. Easy. The average church offering on Sunday back then was six, seven, eight hundred dollars $800 a week. So we raised $3,500, and I was so thrilled, I was tickled to death that Sunday morning. And that night, a missionary came, and they got some kids up and started singing. And I jumped up, and I said, y'all, these people need help. I said, y'all might kill me, but what do y'all think about us giving them that offering we took up this morning? I thought, Please say the thing. You beg me all the time. Get money. You're going to do it. And everybody went, Praise the Lord, preacher. I love it. Let's do it. And people started crying and shouting and everything. And we gave them that money. Every bit of it. Every bit of it. And then let me ask you Did the Lord give it back? Are you kidding? Are you kidding? They have millions of dollars worth of property now. Millions. You know why? Because we didn't just say, here's your $100, I hope you do well. We went that extra, that extra mile. God bless you. Learn how to live with that second mile doctrine. So here's what we're going to do. Come on, Miss Desi. She's going to play. And I don't see nobody crying. And that's okay. You're supposed to cry every time you come to church. I don't see nobody tore all to pieces and weeping your way down here at the altar. And I'm not either. But you don't have to. All you have to do is say, all right, Lord, I'm going to do this. Preacher, sign me up. I was talking to, I was talking to John. You back there, John? I thought I'd seen you hiding back there. Raise your hand. Oh, John back there, he set up our chairs for years and years and years. And I said, John? You going to set them chairs up for us again this year? Yes, sir. Christy, they'll over and blow up them balloons. And, and just stuff like that. If I say, will you blow up a balloon? Say, we'll blow up Twain. <laughs> will you set up some chairs? We'll set up Twain. Randy's going down yonder to get a load. We'll get, a, we'll get two loads. We have to. Preacher, for two weeks, this week, two more count from Friday. I wouldn't to say, hey, I mean, it's still going to be pretty weather. We got all summer, y'all, to enjoy, go to the mountains or something. Let's put these last two weeks, our heart, into this. Yeah. Actually, don't tell nobody this, but the sign phantom will strike tomorrow night. So when you go through Morgan in tomorrow night, after tomorrow night, it's going to look different. Don't you tell nobody I said that. The Oak Ridge boys, come on. Give me a break. <laughs> the Oak Ridge boys come to Morganton. Soon it will say, it's just, Giant Spring Youth Rally. And the Oak Ridge boys will be right behind it. The Oak Ridge boys will be at the Youth Rally. <laughs> but if, if, they can, if they can, if somebody can put up signs all the time with the Oak Ridge boys, surely to the Lord. God, we can do something for Jesus Christ and for people to be saved. Let's stand. Come on. Let's stand our heads bowed. She's playing softly tonight.
Let's just end this Easter Sunday service. Tomorrow's National Atheist Day, April Fool. And, uh, and let's, let's start off April right, y'all. Come on. Come on, teenagers, mamas and daddies. Let's start off April right. Lord, God, I'm going to do it, preacher. I'm going to do it. You let me know what you need. We'll get her done by the grace of God. We'll get her done. Amen. Let's get it done. Hey, preacher, ask me to go a mile. I'll go twain. Ask me to paint, I'll paint twain. Ask me to give, I'll give twain. Ask me to pray, I'll pray twain. Ask me to work, I'll work twain. Ask me to mow the grass, weed eat, I'll weed eat twain. Let's do it. Let's do it tonight. Heavenly Father, I pray in Jesus' name. As we enter into these last three weeks for the youth rally, we'll put this little philosophy in, in practice, Lord. God, help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to put our own desires aside for a few days and get the job done you've given us to do. Have your way here tonight. God, do what ought to be done in every heart and life. Help us, O oh Lord, we pray. God, bless all these that are here in the altar, those at heart. Lord, I know these people work a job and they're tired and they barely make it. I understand that, Lord. But help, <laughs> give us all extra strength, extra strength to be able and willing to to go that extra mile, that extra mile, and get the job done you've given us to do. Lord, I pray you bless the youth rally in mighty, mighty, mighty Holy Ghost power. So it saves souls, change lives, touch hearts. Here, God have mercy on us, we ask. Help us, O oh Lord, we pray. Whatever you do, we'll thank you for it. God, go with us now as we go into these last few weeks. In Jesus' name we ask it, and for his sake. Amen. 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 All right, you turn the off. All right, before you go, before you go. Um,